deep breath in. We are all here and we are ready to get what we want from our teams, what we need. And heaven forbid, we should even like doing it with them every day. And I know we go into hiring and we have such great intentions, um, but we'll go over all that good stuff. Let's just talk about the protocols a little bit. If you have a question and you want to drop it in the chat, go ahead. My team will make sure to bring it up to me. I can't see the chat in this format, all these screens, and you still don't see the chat. And um, But they will interrupt me. And I would tell you, you can interrupt me. Please feel free. This is, this is absolutely your time and your space. So I want to give you what you need so that you can move forward and feel uh, far more in control of this fabulous, most important foundational piece of being a business owner. All right, let's get into it. So for those of you that don't know, I'm Talmar Anderson. They call me the boss muse. I'm a hiring strategist and boss best practices expert. And what that means is I get to help business owners really develop teams that are going to be kick-ass and that you're going to enjoy. And to just give you the how-tos on how to hire, how to manage, and how to step fully into that boss role the way that you want to be. We don't believe in doing it just my way. It's about teaching you how to look into your own business and the way you want a team and bringing those together. So I've got over 20 plus years working with hundreds of business owners all over the world. I'm fortunate enough to say that. However, I am limited because I only speak English. I know I'm smart, but I'm not that smart. So English is uh, the only um, caveat, but I've got clients in the Netherlands and Fiji and uh, Ireland. I think that person's in Ireland right now. So uh, it's one of my joys. And my fun fact, is I was featured on a reality show. Yeah, but you'll have to check in with me a different day. We don't have time to talk about that one, but it's true. All right, so what you're gonna learn today is three specific things. We're gonna talk about how to tell if it's them or if it's you, right? We all have that, that angst. We're like, am I being too hard on them? Are they just not trying hard enough? What's the deal? Is it me or is it them? So we're going to talk about how to identify that so that you can create change more quickly. And um, we're going to talk about how to hold your team accountable, right? That's the big scary one. Am I being mean or am I not being mean enough? Am I too nice? Or how to make that all come together in a way that has way less drama and way less stress. And then the third thing we're going to talk about is how to take control, right? There's so much more control that we have over all the people that we let influence our, our, our business. And so that's really where we start from is, is, is talking about who we're letting in and how we're letting in. But we'll, we'll go to that in a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to ask is I am going to ask you, if you're not speaking to mute yourself, but when you're ready, just unmute and jump right in. And it... This really will be loaded information. It's great content. It will move you forward, I promise. But if you turn off your phone or any extra tabs, I know I'm the guiltiest party to ask you to do that. But if you do it, you will get so much more out of this. So I already saw Imani's got her notebook. If you don't have it yet, grab it and let's get going because this is gonna be good. So here's what we're gonna be really talking about today. So there's the most business owners, right? That's where we are sometimes. And this is where I started too. I used to try to do everything myself and it was to save a dollar or I was just kidding myself that it was faster. I was like, no, no, I'll just do it. It's faster. Or I was just avoiding having the responsibility of a staff, right? You worry about payroll. You worry about how to get them to do the things you want and you just end up burning yourself out. I have been there. But the issue is CEOs with serious growth, with teams that are delivering the way they want. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Lynette. I'm sorry. Hold on. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you. You're doing great. So only business owners with kick-ass teams that they can trust, they, they trust them to deliver. They, have the they get to experience the freedom of having a successfully scaling company when they have really committed to building that team, when they have really prioritize the idea that they don't have to do it all themselves. And the benefit is that is they get a company that is growing, whether they're there or not. Who 
wouldn't that be exciting, right? You could be like, you know, on a cruise, like I'm going to be in just 10 days. Yeah, I'm bragging. Uh, and you know that your team will rock and you will get the job done. So I highly encourage that this is what the difference is between where I was and where I am and where I hope that you can be as well. So let's just be very blunt. If you have your favorite pen in your hand and you're a business owner, this is how you'll know if you should stick around. You're a business owner that is trying to grow a business that can make a greater impact while, while also enjoying the people you work with. This is possible. You know that you're great at what you do, but you feel like you're slowed down by the people that you've tried to hire in the past. You want the answers. You're like, just tell me, tell me, tell me what to do so we can get more quickly, get to the good stuff of celebrating with a team. And that's where it's totally possible. And I don't want you to be disappointed that think it might not be out there. Um, if you know that you do not have to do it all yourself, if you're ready and you just can't even wait to hand it off, if you're ready to delegate some stuff, if we could just head with the right people, this is the place for you. If you are results driven and truly love helping people, those are the people that are going to get the most out of this content that we are going over today. And then if you know that you your business is ready to scale with the right team, but you don't really know how in the hell do I build a right team? What, what am I doing wrong? Where's the, where's the how in building that team? And then if you know that you need to hold the people you hire accountable, but you worry that building a culture of nice is overwhelming your decisions on how to ask them to perform, then this is totally the place for you. However, you should feel free to leave right now if you're convinced that you've tried everything and people just suck. That is not true. That is not my perspective. That is not the point I will be coming from. And you will be sorely disappointed when we get to the end of this webinar. Uh, you, you should also leave if you love to learn, but you usually don't take action. While I understand more information seems attractive, it's really going to slow you down. So this is not where you're at and you're not ready to act on this. It's probably not the best use of your time. If you're not serious about growing your business, your team, or your own best practices, if you're thinking ordering people around will make you feel powerful and set you up as a great boss, I will dash those hopes. That is not the way we want to do it, people. You, if you believe you need a body, anybody, because you have difficulty seeing the value in different experiences that they could bring to your team, then this is probably not the perspective for you. We really believe that different people bring different things, so we have to figure out what that right person is. Um, if you believe that only HR people can do this, hire and manage, by the way, that it's not true. If you believe, if you think that the hiring strategy is only for big businesses, oh, I don't need to know hiring right now. I'm not a big enough company. I don't have employees like that. I just have independent contractors or vendors. By the way, that's all hiring. That's all, you're allowing people to influence your success in that. So you are a boss in that position. But if you're just convinced it's not for you, we will be talking about these things. So it might not be for you to spend your time with us today. And if you think the only way to get results is to hire specialists that are too expensive for your small business, I promise you there are great people out there that want to work with you and for you and will be happy to take the salaries and the, and the rates that you are paying. So please know that we can get the right team for you in a way that will work in your budget. All right. And later I am going to ask for questions, but as I've mentioned, you should feel free to chime in if there's something where you want a little clarity. If I can't answer it right then and there, I will ask to follow up with you after this uh, webinar and I'll set some time apart to make sure I can follow up with each of you. So before we dig in, this is where you get to learn about how I got to the point, right? Because why should you listen to me? Yeah, this is my corporate look. I used to boss around attorneys. So over 10 years ago, I said, bye-bye, corporate. I stopped managing law firms, and I was ready to go out on my own. And I was doing okay. I was figuring it out as I went, right? I'd always helped businesses run their business administration side. So I was, I called it the business side of business. So it was the HR and the accounting and the IT and the uh, what, uh, information technology, marketing, whatever, all the business side of it. And so I went out originally as an operations consultant before I started Boss Actions. 
and I was doing okay, right? I was starting to get a little busy and then I got a little busier and then I got stuck in busy because I just, it felt like it was overwhelming, right? It wasn't in demand. I wasn't the in demand kind of busy. Yeah, I'm sorry, we're booked right now. And it didn't feel so in control. I just felt overwhelmed. And maybe you can relate because I struggled with priority. I felt like everything was the most important thing to be working on. And I was always working. And I do love working, but my family wanted to see me once in a while. So they got a little grumpy about that. Time management, right? I felt like there literally were not enough hours in the day. I got to tell you, you know how you manifest and you journal. I literally was writing things like, I want to find a magic four hours a day. <laughs> I, was, I was like, how do I manifest time? And then I knew that clarity. I also just knew... It, there was something missing in my business. I was working so hard and I guess I was trying to get one more sale, but I felt like I wasn't working on the right things. I felt like there, I should be doing something different, but I didn't know what that was. And I felt really frustrated, but then I discovered it. I discovered my missing piece. I discovered my dream of being a business owner was never about doing it all alone. I very specifically remember the moment I decided to be a business owner. I was running a law firm. I was standing in the driveway talking to my husband. And he was like, really? So you, you think you're going to do this? And I did this thing where I was like rubbing my forehead. And if you play poker with me, you now know one of my tells. Because when I get really nervous, like it gets like itchy right at my hairline. And I'm like, I think I think I am. And I went back and forth. And I was, I was thinking, okay, okay. If I go into business for myself, I'll have control of the people I work with but I'll miss seeing you guys all the time. My son was only one and a half at the time. And then I thought, but I could make more money. And then I thought, but it's a lot of work. And I was going back and forth and I didn't know what to do. And I will tell you, it literally hit me like a thunderbolt. I closed my eyes and I had a vision, a vision of celebrating. And it was a little cheesy because like the light was shining down on us and we were all high-fiving and wearing really hipster clothing. I don't know why, but we were really cool. We like, we looked like Amber Crombie and Fitch or J. Crew or something really, really square and corporate. Like it wasn't the right entrepreneurial vision. Nowadays I get to wear t-shirts and sparkly shirts, so it's way better. But I was high-fiving someone. Did you hear it? That was my vision. My vision was to celebrate with people when my business did well. My vision was to be attaboying other people in my company. So no wonder I felt disconnected. I wasn't doing what I intended. I had found my missing piece. And so I took my experiences and we put it all together and we started delivering on that idea of how to find good people, how to let somebody go if they weren't the right match, right? And as I got more focused, that's when I started building my own team. And that's when I was able to do more of what I wanted, whether it was speaking gigs like this, where I get to share my message with people, or if I was able to get more specific and work on what was truly profitable in my company, having a team allows me to do that. And here's the fun part, right? Having a team gives me sp the space, the time, and the money to truly design days and the life that I wanted that were fun for me. In fact, my favorite picture of all this, I do love travel and I love my, this is my beautiful husband and son, but if you see this picture of grown-up women dressed like superheroes right in the corner over here, yeah, we were all over 40. In fact, we were celebrating somebody's 50th running around Las Vegas, grown women dressed like superheroes, having a blast. And if you haven't done it, grab your best friend, dress like something ridiculous and run all over Vegas. They don't even look twice at you. They don't think anything of it, but it's very, very fun. But I only got to do that because I knew my company was in good hands. I knew my clients were taken care of. I knew business was still going while I was drinking too many vodkas. Yeah, it was a lot of vodka. But that's Vegas for you. What are you going to do? You don't have to do it that way. Maybe yours is meditating, but this is what I want for you. I want the freedom to do what you want and when you want it. And through that clarity and through doing it for myself and now doing it for hundreds of other business owners, my mission is to make it much easier and much faster for business owners to build, lead, and celebrate with their own kick-ass teams. Because I've done it. I've seen it do it. And now my clients literally talk about how it's life-changing.
In fact, funny enough, I happen to have a case story right here. So this is Monica Jansen. She worked with me. She was one of our first bus action clients and she wanted to have three day weekends in the winter. Her family loves to snowboard and she was trying to figure out how to build a team. She has a marketing agency and predominantly her team uh, is independent contractors. And so she says, after two bad hires, I knew something had to change and Talmar was just the person to do it. She swooped in and helped me set up a hiring process that not only ensures I bring the best people on board, but also have plenty more in my back pocket when I need to scale quickly because she, that's a great story too. Another time. I have also turned her community for management advice when I'm facing a prickly or downright awful situation. Their fantastic advice has given me the confidence to move forward and make smart decisions. Thanks, Talmar. You've been a godsend. And I got to tell you, Monica is amazing. And since we worked together, it was at least four or five years ago now, she actually is living in a different state. She completely moved her family. Like they, they moved closer to snow and her company has grown. They've uh, acquired other companies. It's been just super fun watching how she has scaled once she got this piece for hiring a team under her. So I want you to take your moment. What could your business look like with people you trusted rocking their jobs? In fact, if you know what you're gonna do, I want you to drop in the chat what you would do with your extra time. What would, is it writing a book? Is it going to the beach? Is it moving to the beach? That's something we're doing. We're getting closer to water because I wanna live near water. So we're moving in the summer this coming summer. So it's very exciting. This is what your teams can do for you. With the right people, you really can be where you want to be. And it's amazing. So where do we start? We're just going to get right into it. How to tell if it's them or if it's you. Grab your notebooks, my peoples. Excellent. Oh, I love it. I love it. Everybody's in the chat. Oh, I finally, yay, I can see it. You're going to travel. I would actually read a book. <laughs> Jenna, I got to tell you, I buy books all the time and I don't read them. I would exercise more. Oh, Susie girl, that sounds like you're beating up on yourself, not being nice, but if you say so. Close to water and more vacation time. Oh, Amani, we're soul sisters. I love that. Just enjoying life. Oh, see, that's sad. I want you to enjoy life. It's so good. The fear of losing control has been part of the issue. I've gotten over that. I love it. Oh my gosh, you guys are amazing. Thank you for sharing all that. All right, so let's get into it. How to tell if it's them or if it's you. And the reason we want to get clear on that, it's okay. So first of all, it's okay. I don't care whose fault it is, other than it lets us know where to create correction. Does that make sense? It's about identifying the problem so we can move forward. Not about blame, not about should haves. It's about how to move forward. That's all that we're ever going to focus on. As soon as it will move forward, we will focus on other things. All right, so let's talk about Anne. Anne came to work with us and she, she'd been in business for 15 years and she had desperately been trying to fill a training position in her company. She has a financial services company and she thought she had cracked the nut on hiring. She was like, oh, Talmar, oh, I did my homework. I knew exactly what I wanted. I have this great presentation. It's all written. It's done. It's all done. I've, I've delivered it in millions of times. I just needed somebody that could come in, memorize their lines and do the presentation, right? So she hired an actor. She was like, that's, I just need somebody to read my lines. Well, people, she got what she paid for. So she took the time to understand that she wanted somebody to do her process, to really deliver her process. However, she wasn't really clear on the result. What she really wanted from that role was somebody that was going to close and schedule leads, not close business. That wasn't correct. Schedule leads. So after the presentation, they were supposed to be following up and getting them on a calendar and getting them to come in to meet with the experts in her company. But he would just go do the presentation and then be like, okay, I'm out. And he wouldn't engage with people. He didn't know how to have persuasive conversations, which, you know, he's an actor. You'd think you'd learn, but it never came together. And that's when she was like, this is it, Tom. Right? I, I think I know what I'm doing, but apparently I don't because this actor, so we, we helped her have the conversation she needed to have to let him know that this was not working. And we helped her clearly identify what she needed moving forward. And she gave us a great testimonial. And I'll tell you about that another day too. But, but just know it, it does take some time to get clear on what's going on and why things aren't working. So she thought she had it figured out 
and then she had to go back and assess. Why isn't it working? So here's three questions. When you feel like you have somebody in your company that's not performing, that will help you understand how to take action going forward. That's what this conversation is about. It is all about understanding what we're going to do going forward. So the first question is, I guess we didn't really write it in a question form, but that's okay. <laughs> so ask yourself, I do or do not believe they have the experience and skills to perform the job fully. So this is really assessing if we hired the right person. Did we hire somebody to sell that has never closed business somewhere else? Did we hire somebody to be a customer service person that can't, is so in, introverted and shy that they can't even talk to somebody on a phone, right? So do we first think they have the skills and experience to perform the job? Now, I will tell you, this one is a really big line. If you do not believe they have the experience and skills, you literally have to let them go. That's not a thing where you're allowed to go back and teach them. A very big rule at Boss Actions is we do not teach people how to do the job. You are a small business owner and you do not have the time. Once you are generating close to 5 million, it should be at least 2 million, but close to 5 million in revenue annually, we can talk about an internship program that will allow you to teach people how to do things in your business. But right now, you need to make sure you're hiring people that can do the job. So the first question is, do we think they have the experiences and the skills? If you still believe that, then we move to the second question. I do or do not believe they understand their responsibilities for the job fully. Now, this could be uh, their fault or your fault, and it's going to take a little time to figure this out. There's a couple of quick things that you can do to make sure that you are assessing whether it's them or you. So if you feel like, I don't think they understand their job fully, the first one, I'm going to put the, your feet to the fire. Do you have a written job description? One. And if you do, oh, I saw a face on some, I'm, just, I'm not going to call it anybody, but I saw people making faces on that one. If you do have a job description, did you actually, during their onboarding or at any point since you've written it, gone through it step by step with them? Really line by line. Don't, don't assume that everybody defines things the same way you do. You have to give them the opportunity to ask clarifying questions to better understand what you're looking for. So if you do have a job description, then, then you and you have gone through it with them, well, then you probably need to have a, a performance type conversation that lets them know that you're of the impression they know what to do and they're just not doing it. And so you would go through and have a management performance meeting with them. If you said no to any of these questions, no, I don't have a job description or I have a job description, but no, I haven't sat down with you, with them. Well, then this is on us. And so this is where we start to take the time to really make sure we're setting the expectations correctly with our team, right? So I do believe, or I do not believe they understand the responsibilities for the job fully. And that all comes from the job description. The job description is a management tool. Did you guys know that? I know. Most people think it's just about the employment ad. Employment ads are written to attract people. Job descriptions are written so people know how to be successful, right? We want everyone to know how to do the job, how to make the boss happy, how to do it well. And if we don't take the time to write a job description and explain it to them, they, we have no chance at success. There, our, our hope is that they will hear our words and that those words mean exactly precisely the same thing to them. And it creates a lot of opportunity for misconceptions, missed deadlines, frustration, stress, drama, and the blah that we're trying to avoid. That was a technical word. Let me do that for you one more time. Blah. But yeah, so, so that's, those are the tools we want to use. So the third question is this. I do or do not trust them in this role. When you have an underperformer, you must ask this question. It is possible to have somebody that has so misstepped, even if it was we didn't have a job description, even if we didn't set the expectations exactly right. It is possible that we could have somebody in a role that we just don't believe they could ever do the job. It's just for whatever reason that trust has been broken and we just don't trust that they can do the job fully. And that's a you know real truth time for you to be looking inward because if you don't trust them, no amount of effort is ever going to change it. Even if they try harder, they're still going to mess up other things. 
Plus, I would tell you 90% of the time that trust issue is your gut looking out for you. So trust your gut. If you think you don't trust them, spending more time and energy trying to fix them is only stealing from your company. It's only stealing from your progress. It is not your job to fix them. It is your job to protect the business and what it needs. And if this person is not somebody you can trust to do the job, then it's time to release them so they can go find a job they can be successful at and you can get more clear on getting the right person in. I know, tough love. That's how we do it here. So, okay. So if we know that we're trying to make sure we have the right people around us, keep these things in mind. Are they a match for what success requires in your role? So is this person likely to be able to deliver success with what they currently have? If all they need is some tweaking from you on expectations or some communication issues on how to be held accountable and what will happen if they don't, then this is on you. But if they don't have the skills, you can, you're not going to have the time to teach them before. It's just going to cost you too much money and energy and stress. And they may never learn it. Even if you think they want, will learn it. They might not. Not everybody can learn everything. So be mindful about that. Are they, do they have what you, is required for success? And then also think about, can I create stronger communication on expectations for success? So we do that through the documentation, like a job description and other documents, but we also do that through our meeting process and our management style. So how can you create stronger communication on expectation for success? It's all about, I want you to be successful team member. This is what I think I'm giving you. This is what I've said. What do you need from me to be successful? It's constantly building that communication. And then do I believe that they can do the job once, uh, once the above are done, sorry, I can read my own sentence. So if we have, if they are a match and if we have communication, do we really truthfully in our heart of hearts believe they can do the job? If there's a chance that that's a yes, then that's why you would still move them into performance as opposed to letting them go. All right, so a story. So Mike asked a friend, do you hate me? This is how important clarity is. So Mike's a client of ours. And before he started working with us, he went to a networking event. This is back in the days when everybody got to meet in person and it was a lunch and he sat down next to a friend and he was like, boy, I really need to get a virtual assistant. And his friend, I don't remember his name. We'll call him Steve. Steve says, oh my gosh, I have the best virtual assistant. Uh, you should totally hire her. Mike's like, great, done. Literally hired her that day. So two months go by for whatever reason, he missed a lunch uh, the, the monthly lunch one month and then went the second month. And Mike walks up to Steve and is like, do you hate me? And Steve's like, what in the world are you talking about, man? No, I don't hate you. What, what's going on? And he said, this assistant you sent me is horrible. She, I've asked her again and again and again to do the social media postings. She's avoiding them. She hasn't even started them. She hasn't even given me anything for approval. I'm just about to lose my mind. And Steve goes, man, I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. She was amazing for me. She organized all my files. It was easy for me to get my documentation. I mean, it was never so completely organized and detailed as I'd ever seen. And did you hear it? Right, they were using a virtual assistant, same title, right? For two entirely different things. And because it was a referral from Steve, he just took it to mean this person's going to fulfill my needs. So here are the rules. We have rules at Boss Actions. Talmar's rule is if you get a referral, they only leapfrog to the front of your vetting process. You cannot skip over any pieces of the hiring process. The joke I say is if you're hiring your mom, you still need to put her through the process of a customer service representative because you know her as a mom and a great baker and somebody gives good hugs and puts band-aids on boo-boos, but you don't know how she's going to handle it when your client's yelling in her face. You don't know if she understands how to use the back-end system that you have. You have to vet her for this specific role. It's a different relationship. It's a different concept and you're a different boss when there's a referral. So do be mindful. That's one of the biggest kind of sinkholes that I see bosses getting into is they get a referral and they assume that it's the right fit. It's a great person because somebody likes and you like them. That's not enough. We need to know if they can do the job. So, so please, please, please referrals go to the front of your vetting process. But let us be clear. If you have a good vetting process, you can really set it up to only be working on the pieces that you want. 
like, yeah, enjoying a nice yellow cup of coffee or tea, just sitting back laughing and not, she doesn't look stressful. Her shoulders don't look that high. She looks like she has a little shoulder pad on. But other than that, she looks like she's rocking her day, having a good day with her teammates. And that's what I want for you. That's what we're building here. If you understand what I'm saying and you can imagine it, say, heck yeah, Telmar, or any version of that in the chat. <laughs> Oh, three family members. Oh, Amani. Mm. Yeah, that is a tough one. I'm so sorry. We call that loving through the pain. Yeah, that is a lesson. Hells yeah. Oh, I like that one. Good one, Susie. Yeah, uh, family members can be really, really challenging. And I, I can think of a million things we can talk about. So let's make sure we follow up on that. Oh, my gosh. System. All right, so let's get to number two because we're getting into time. I know you're surprised I talk too much and we're already behind time. So how to hold your team accountable, right? This is where we're asking them to do the job that they said they were going to do. Crazy talk. And if we do the process, if we follow a process, we really can get ahead of the drama and the stress. And then it's just a communication of, you know, do you have what you need? Are you going to be able to do it? You didn't do it. Thank you. We wish you luck oversimplified, but let's go through that. So Debbie's assistant said, this is not working. Can you imagine somebody so professional as to come up to you, the boss and say, you know what? I don't think this is working for us. I think we should talk about doing something differently. Seriously, that's how she approached it. Her team member came to her and she was right. And Debbie was actually thinking the same thing. So Debbie had gone into the situation thinking she wanted one thing and hired somebody for that one thing. But as they got into it, it was a new position in her company. As they got into it more and more, they both realized that what she needed was somebody that was very different than the person she had hired. And they both, because of the communication, the management meetings, the way they were talking and, and, and really getting clear, they had a professional situation where the assistant could say, I don't think I'm the right fit for this. After working with the, I think she was there for about five or six months. And they both were like, yeah, I think this is, it was not stressful. There was nobody flipping tables. Nobody was calling the cops. It was a really honest conversation between them. Now I'll tell you, not everybody gets to have that, but a lot of people do once they get in the habit of understanding how to have a professional situation on how we communicate and what we're thinking the expectations are and how people can perform. And that is literally one of the perks of being the business owner. We can build the team any way we want. If we want to lead to success for both them and for us, as the boss, we have to be willing to get clear on what's working and what's not. Sometimes that's a mismatch hire. And that happens in small business because we're growing and we really believe this is where we want to go. But as we get into it, we're like, hmm, it really needs to be this kind of a role. So forgive yourself if you make a hire that ends up being a mismatch just because we're still clarifying. In that scaling time, we might think we need somebody that is more customer service and less back end. But as the workflow comes in and we grow, it might be more of a back end job with just a little bit of customer service. So as things grow and change, uh, just as long as you're building your management style to have the communication, you can get ahead of these things in a way that's not stressful or dramatic. That's really what we're trying to go with when we're talking here. But let's imagine a world where you have current team members that are not performing the way that we need them to. They're not showing up, right? But I will tell you, a lot of that has to do with how you're showing up for them. I know I'm so mean, but it's true. It's all in us showing up the right way and being there for our team. So the three things that you can do that will dramatically improve how your people perform is have consistent scheduled meetings. By prioritizing your team over your new client, a prospect, over, you know, um, having a new strategy session for your next big thing. If you prioritize your meetings with your team on a regular basis, it will dramatically improve how you communicate. And here's the interesting thing. I don't know, maybe some of you saw Dashing Through December. We were doing a series. And one of the big ones we talked about is, I open town bar. I have an open door policy. Oh, I get it. But let us be clear. Open door policy is a piece of your management style. 
And it is really, really hard for an employee to come in and interrupt their boss to admit they don't know something or they feel like they're doing something wrong and to not feel like they're putting something upon you, that they're not creating more stress or overwhelm for you. So for those people that might never take advantage of an open door policy until they have trust with you, that you as a boss are really there to help them with their solution. If they don't have that with you yet, you will get to develop it by having your consistent meetings. If you have one-on-one -on -one meetings, which by the way, one-on-one -on -one is all about them and not about you giving them new work or talking about uh, bad performance. It, it might turn into that depending on the answers they give you. But in the beginning, all those meetings should always be about the person telling you how they think they're doing, what they think they need, and how they are getting on in their projects. It's all about them. And if you can do that consistently, then they know that they can count on their boss being available for them. Because here's step number two to getting the performance you want and really elevating them, allowing them to ask questions. Now, you may say that you allow them to ask questions. Of course, they can ask me a question. I'm available all the time. I understand that. But truth be told, oh, I'm sorry. Wow. Who? All right. Let's see that again. Sorry, everybody. Truth be told, it's really critical that you create space for them to allow questions. Again, again this is in our meeting. If Somebody, um, somebody just came on and probably needs to mute themselves, please. So if we are in our meetings and we're allowing them to ask questions, do you have, in fact, prompting them, do you have any questions on that? And I would tell you, this is really critical when you are assigning new work. All right, I need this by this deadline at this time. Will that work on your schedule, right? Ask them if they have the time to do the work you're assigning. And if they say, well, I've got to do this, what's the priority? always allow for questions to be asked. That's gonna make a huge difference. And, and in a world where you feel very busy, giving them time and access to you will always come about. So the third thing that you can do to elevate uh, and really make a big difference in the way that you're gonna perform is to create and inform them on when and how to ask for help. So one of the biggest complaints I hear from business owners is, I want to get to work. You're telling me I have to have an open door policy, Tamar, but I, I need to be able to focus, right? When do I have my time to get things done? Well, set those boundaries, boss, right? This is up to you, but you do need to let them know how to ask for help and when to ask for help. So one of the main things that you can do is you can create an opportunity through maybe, maybe you don't like texts. Maybe texts are very interruptive for you. I totally get that. And that's possible. In which case you just got to let them know, hey, team members, when you are trying to get a hold of me for something critical, please make sure that you use our messaging system, not text. If you know that you are, uh, Susie, if you could uh, mute yourself. Um, oh, sorry. If you know, that's okay. <laughs> It's setting them up by telling them how to ask for help is critical. So, so telling them what you don't want is part of it, but it's also about telling them what you do want. How do they, if there is a client screaming bloody murder, how do you want them to tell you? Do you want them to tell you through an email? Do you want them to just do one email a week? That's a summary. Do you want one email a day? Do you want notes in the client system? Telling them how to get a hold of you and ask for help. Do they tag you in some kind of a project uh, shared database? How do they ask you in a way that will not interrupt your flow, but make sure that they feel like they're allowed to come to you in a way that says, I need help in this moment outside of our regular meetings. Creating that structure for you and your team will be huge because you will feel less put upon. You will have, get the communications in the way that you want. And now we really are creating a situation where they can ask for help, get the answers they need to keep moving. It's one of the biggest things that business owners forget to do is tell people how they want to be told when there's an oh crap situation, I need to ask the boss, how do you want them to interrupt you? And, that, and if you just take that little moment of understanding how you want that to happen and then let them know that, then you get to hold them accountable. If they text you with a problem and you don't respond, they don't get to be, you know, you get to be like, why didn't you come through the messenger? That was our protocol. That was our policies. This is an issue I have with you now. So we, we set the rules so that they can be successful, but also to hold them accountable. Does that make sense? All right, let's keep going to the next piece. I hear you saying, yeah, yeah, tell her, but how do I tell them they're not doing a good enough job? Here's three key pieces that will help you when you are pulling them into a performance meeting. 
The first thing is create yourself an agenda. They don't need to see it. It can be just bullet points, but make sure you know what you're going to discuss in that performance meetings. Really know what you want to get out of it, what you're trying to articulate. Make sure you leave space to ask them questions, right? But create a little agenda for yourself so that when you call them in and you're nervous about having that conversation with your underperformer, you can do this. Then take time again ahead of the meeting to think what are the possible results. If you're telling them, look, I need you to show up at 8.15 every day. And if they say, I don't think I can do that. Is it, do you, are you letting them go? Or is this a conversation where you're like, well, when can you get here? Why can't you get here? Know all the possible answers before you go in. Now, reality says we can't know all the answers. So if you're ever stumped and you get into a meeting and somebody is like, they ask you a question that you're not prepared to answer, you just say, you know what, that's a great question. Let me have 24 hours, 48 hours, depends on what you've got going on, to think about that. So can I get back with you on noon on Thursday? Give them a very specific time and date if you need to follow up with them, and then actually follow up with them at that time. But it's okay to defer questions that you're not ready to answer. Does that make sense? All right. So once we've done, we've created an agenda, we've considered the different results and how we would handle them. We want to be very clear in performance meetings. We have to have the discussion about the or else. We have to be crystal clear in that conversation. If we are telling somebody that they have made a mistake and we are taking the time to clarify with them how that can be resolved, that's great. But what you really need to be doing is telling them if this happens again, what that's going to look like. So that could be something to the effect of, you know, when you called the client dear, she really did not like that. That's far too informal for the way that our company talks to our clients. And that's definitely not part of our policies or the way that we traditionally handle clients. So I need to be very specific with you. If this happens again, we will have to do a formal write-up. And what that looks like is you and I have in a meeting very similar to this. We write up the issue. It goes into your personnel file. And that means if it happened another time, that that would end up in a termination. Do you have any questions about how serious this is right now? Right, and that's how that conversation can go. But you have to let them know what's coming down the line. If the next action is termination, you just say that. If this happens again, you will be terminated immediately. If this happens again, you will be terminated. And um, you know, depending on the situation, you would say something about how that would look. I would have to call you and let you know that you were no longer with the firm. I would, you know, we would have a meeting. Whatever, however you would to handle that. It's very situational, so I can't give you too many examples. But the clarity I want in this, when you're dealing with somebody that is not doing a good enough job, it's all about performance. So this next slide that I'm going to show you, seriously, take a picture of it if you want it, because this is where when you feel like you've got somebody that is just a hot mess and you are so frustrated with them and you are ready to have a meeting and you mostly want to tell them that you're just, you're just done with them, we still have to go back to performance. So if you're not sure what we're talking about, here are some of the places you can look. Specifically, when you're having performance issues, whether it's you or their com your communication about it or their performance, you do need to consider that they did not know the thing that you're going to hold them accountable for if it's the first conversation. These are things you could look at. Look at the job description. Did you ever go over that with them? Or a scope of work, because if we're talking about an independent contractor, you don't have job descriptions, you have scope of work. They're very similar, but it's going to be project specific. So you pull that up and you think about, are they hitting all the markers here? You can refer to deadlines that they may have missed. That's a performance issue. If they're continually turning in work two days late, that is a performance issue. If, they are, if you're getting complaints from customers or other team members, that is absolutely a performance issue. It is part of the job description to work with the rest of the team and to be able to do that in a professional and friendly manner, or it might just be professional, maybe we care less about friendly. Um, refer to communication failures between you and them. So this could be, you know, you told them that they needed to be at uh, uh, a site in Wichita at this day, and they ended up at a site in Kansas City the other day. So, so where's the miscommunication coming in? And refer to incomplete work, right? Or quality of work. If you're redoing work for people, this is a performance issue. 
If you are referring to a po uh, employee policy failures, they wear t-shirts when they're supposed to wear blouses or suits, um, that's a policy failure. And refer to team or culture failures, right? If continually they you know, yell at people or they make people feel less than, or you have other you know, culture issues, right? They make people feel like they're not as worthy or not as smart or whatever the culture tension is. That's something that you can hold them accountable to. But the key is once you've identified the performance issue, you do need to step back one moment and you need to consider, is there any chance, which there is always a chance, by the way, is there any chance that this person did not know that this was a requirement? And I've got a story for you. So I am ready to fire someone from a, a company I was working at. And I call in the in-person, and this is the third time. So this is a firing conversation. And I ask her to come in and I say, okay, I, I think you know why you're here. You still haven't organized the files the way we've asked. It's still all over your office. And at this point, we're going to have to terminate you. And she goes, I'm being fired? And I think this is our third conversation. How could she not know? Like, I'm sure, I, I know how to do this. I am sure, I am sure that I said she was going to get fired if we had this conversation again. So I'm like, really, you're surprised? And she says, yeah, you never said fired. I never knew that was a thing. And I had to step back and think about it. So this person came from a country where pretty much people didn't get fired, right? Tenure was just forever. You got a job and you literally worked there until you didn't work there, until you died or you got sick. It was never, you people, it was really impossible to get fired in this situation. So, so I recognize, well, you know what? I might've said some, you know, nice way of saying, uh, you're not, this won't work out or this is gonna you know, end not end well, I must have said something very nice as opposed to just saying fired or terminated, which are two words that are pretty universally understood in the English language, even for second English or for different country people, right? And so I was like, okay. So I stepped to her and I said, hear me now. If we have this conversation, if those files aren't organized by the end of the day, you will be terminated effective immediately. You will no longer work here. She goes, that's all you had to say. I am not kidding. She walked straight back to her office and put all of the, the offending files exactly where they needed to be, got that situation sorted out, and we never had the problem again. So please know, as much as you believe in your heart of hearts that you have said it, you need to take the time to get specific and clear so that you can get the result you want from people. So when we go into these performance, it's in your best we'll call it your best interest, in your best interest to go in assuming they are not clear on what the expectation is. And you can just specifically say, this is the performance failure and this is our expectation. How is it that we got to this performance failure? And if they're like, I really never knew that, you, even if you didn't believe them, you, that's when you could give them a chance. You create clarity, you give them the chance to fix it, tell them how this is done right, but you must still have the or else. Even if they didn't know, you have to have that conversation of, if it happens again, this is what it's gonna look like and this is what it will mean to you. So, so whether it was their fault or not, whether you didn't tell them, whether they didn't understand, it still has to end in that conversation that now that we're clear on the expectation, this is how we go forward. So when you've got that underperformer and you're trying to ask them to be accountable, really take the time to get clear on where they're failing in their performance. And then you have to take the time to understand, is this required for successful employment, right? If it's that important, then we need them to do this thing, whatever the performance issue is. And then you need to be clear with your own self boss, what, when is it gonna be enough to fire? Is it just, it happens one more time and you're out? Is this the kind of thing that is critical? Giving them multiple chances is not helping them. It's not helping your business. If they can't do the job, let them go find a job they can be successful at so you can attract a person that can be successful in their place. Don't keep it going too long. When I started working with Andrea, who's got a huge government contracting company, she's a very successful person, but she was really feeling unsure about how to hold, hold her leadership team accountable. 
And so we started working together and she said, Talmer provided excellent guidance while coaching me on how to boss it up. One of my favorite things is that a lot of my clients create different versions of boss because we do the same. So boss it up is one of them. I've been called a boss whisperer. Um, somebody said they gave them their boss balls. Hmm, sorry, that may or may not be appropriate, but that's what they said. So I actually enjoy that. So now that we're going through some of this, are you having any light bulb moments? Do you see where this could actually help you build up your team in the way that you want? Yeah, it's huge, right? We have to get in front of them. We have to help them more. All right, so how do we take control? So the people side of your business is the enjoyable side. It literally breaks my heart when I see people go, oh, they roll their eyes at hiring or they roll their eyes at management. I really need to have a conversation with them. I really need to fire them. I really need to hire. But the thing is, if you have the right team, it's like one of the best parts of your company. You can't wait to give them work. You can't wait to get on the call with them because you know they're going to deliver for you every time. It is the best. And the easiest way to take control of that is to take the time to really get clear on the idea. Your business is an entity with its own needs. This isn't about you. This isn't about you. I know I've been talking about being the boss and stepping into the role, but if you can understand that your business has needs and you as the boss need to protect the business, that's how you can start to make your shift to a thriving boss. Hiring and firing is not personal. It's about getting clear on what success looks like, attracting the people that can be successful and helping them do the job successfully. It really is that simple. And if we work from this place of clarity and understanding and using process to make sure we get predictable results, then we can really have the team that our business needs to grow successfully, which is the point. That's literally why you're here today. You want to know how to grow this business outside of yourself with a team that you like, that can deliver, that you can trust to do their job. So Talmar, I hear this very often. When I do try to hire, how do I know they're going to be able to do what they say they can do? So there's a couple of things you can do. Be clear on what results you want from the position. If you start from thinking of what do I want this position to give my company, right? Is it that they're, they're delivering customer service that's so good that people tell their friends? Is it that they are a salesperson that closes two new companies every month? If you are, you know, get clear on the results you need, because that's how you can back into what success will look like from somebody that can deliver on that. And you do have to learn to ask the right questions. It breaks my heart when people ask the same questions in interviews for every single type of position they have in a company. Because I promise you, asking every person in your company where they're going to be in five years has very little to do with the success that they will deliver for you. Because let's be clear, most employment, successful employment is 18 to 36 months nowadays. So you will, if you're successful, which is all I want for all of you, and you continually grow, which is all I want for you, you will consistently need to have a hiring process in your company so that you can handle the fact that people will be coming and going. Our, our, our country change and the economic world on how people are hired and fired change and our labor force values things very differently now. So we are really looking for companies or for people that will stay with our company for 18 to 36 months. That's three years or less. And what that means is they need to be very effective from the minute they step in, which is why I insist that you really have to be in front of people so that they can do the job correctly. And we need to make sure they're the right person. And you need to ask for past performance insight from others. You need to use your reference checks. We need to know if they saw them doing the job well. In boss actions, we call the vetting. Yeah, make them prove they are worthy of you and this job and your customers. Take the time before you hire them to make sure that the right person, instead of hiring anybody and trying to teach them. Maybe they'll learn and maybe they won't, but it's super expensive and it's not the best thing for your company. You really want to make them prove that they are worthy of you, this job and your customers well before you go through hiring them and adding them to the payroll or getting them as an independent contractor. And so the number one action that you can do to ensure you're hiring the right candidates 
so that you can get the what you need from them. This process, baby, I love a good process. So take a picture of this one too, if you're taking pictures, because this is the process for building a kick-ass team. You have to master the boss practices. You have to have a really strong management and communication system. You want to make sure that you learn how to identify what your business needs and what success will look like for you. You have to learn to attract the kind of people that will be successful for you, your business, and your customers. And then you have to use a customizable, predictable hiring process so that you make them prove they're worthy before we start to pay them. And then once you have that, if you add in an onboarding process, step-by-step -step process that allows you to really build loyalty and tenure, that's what onboarding is about. It's not just about showing them where the pens are. It's about letting them know how they are fitting in, how they can be successful, and making sure they have what they need to work within your team, your culture, and this position. It's a process. It's something that can be taught. It's something anyone can learn. And these are the pieces that you need in your company to make sure that your team is going to be hugely successful. So if you know, uh, so your decision points for this one right here are, do we know what we want them to do? When you're thinking about hiring, when you're thinking about bringing somebody new on, remember we were talking about the questions to ask if we have an underperformer, that oftentimes leads to, oh crap, now we've got to hire someone but it shouldn't be, it should be okay. Let's get clear so I get the right person in this next hire. So do we know what we want them to do? Have we given them adequate, uh, have they given me, sorry, adequate reason to believe they can deliver? We want to believe them because the truth is they can say anything they want in those interviews and that's why it gets everybody scared. But you can use a process to make them prove it. If I tell you that I was the president of the United States and I lived at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, that's a good start, right? At least I know the address, but you wanna see if other people, can anyone else speak to that expectation? Did anyone see me represent the company, I mean, re represent the country in maybe a state of the union uh, address? Or did anyone see me you know, at some kind of a foreign dignitaries meeting representing our country? Can anyone speak to having a meeting with me at the White House and how I handled myself as the president? These are all things that can be proven. So we have to take that time. That's how we get ahead of this expense of hiring the wrong people and getting stuck in what we call a hiring loop. Debbie was in the same position. She just was like, I don't know how I'm ever going to prove to myself that these people are worth it and that they're going to do the job. And she said, she, that's why she decided to hire, work with us. And she said, I wanted to learn how to hire right. And boy, did I. So she came from a corporate background and been a boss for many years, but had never been responsible for hiring. So she knew how to manage in, in a corporate situation. And now she was the boss and was feeling angst about being the actual person in charge of deciding whether somebody was good or not good, is how she put it. But if we're clear with our expectations, if we hire the right people, we can have success. So a boss provides the tools and the team builds the success. This is what I want for you all. Um, I'm just gonna check the chat real fast. Were there any questions that I needed to worry about? I think we got to most of them. Uh, yes, there will be a replay. I'm probably too late to answer that. Um, any other questions that I need to answer before I keep going? We're almost done, I promise. All right, so uh, let's keep going then. So if we know that, oops, it's your time to build, lead, and celebrate with your own team with the guidance of a step-by-step -step system, then I want you to remember this. Nothing I've shared with you today is theory or ideas. These are all the things that me and my clients have done to scale our businesses. And as they like to say, over 70% of my clients, they say it changes their lives, that it is makes a fundamental difference in how they approach business and the people they let come into their company. And I don't have any advantages or special skills. I don't have a secret tool or access to expensive resources. I just have a system that works. And if I can do it, I promise you can too. So just to recap today, we talked about how we need to take time to get clear and that a team delivers the best results when the boss shows up, that people are the priority 
and only you can decide who will be successful for your company. You learned how to build loyalty and a team you enjoy by stepping into that boss role, right? We can hold them accountable. We can set expectations. We can assess whether or not they're doing a good job without making it personal. And you learn that hiring is literally planning for success, which is my favorite reason and why I get so excited about hiring. And you saw that being a business owner is about surrounding yourself with the people that can build your company and serve your customers. And you're here today because you want to grow your business without giving up quality, that you want a simple solution to hiring good people for a high functioning team. And you felt like you were handling hiring in fits and starts and in the past and finally are ready to make a change. So now is your time. And it, if you're ready to experience freedom of time and money and have your company grow successfully, it's your time to stop dealing with good enough forever. That's one of our big rules. Do not hire good enough. You're literally waiting for them to fail. I only want you to hire the right people for your team so that when you go to hold them accountable, they totally already have the tools. And if you decide you want to work with Boss Actions, nothing is holding you back. We have a system that provides a step-by-step -step hows, at how to hire, how to manage, how to be the boss that really is the comp of the company and the team you want. And you can do it with ongoing support that quickly gets through your challenges. Another client, Rachel. Rachel said, if you want to be an actual boss, listen and learn from Talmar. She has helped my, me find my boss voice. Her programs are not wishy-washy. They're direct and informative and life-changing. I went through a period where I lost two employees in one week, which basically was 50% of my main for workforce. Through Talmar's programs, I was able to hire new employees with more confidence. I'm still learning how to be a better boss, but with her monthly sessions, I can learn something new and useful. Thank you, Talmar, for being the boss whisperer. And actually, those monthly sessions are now weekly sessions. So that's the best part is I'm available to all of our clients. So we do have a groundbreaking program. It's called Bossification, and it really lets you make the shift from business owner to thriving boss. It includes an amazing step-by-step -step program, a quick start success path. It's got on-demand videos. It's got access to me weekly where I answer Q&As. It's got a private Facebook group and so much more. The important thing is if you decide to work with me, by the end of our time together, you will understand. You will have developed your own hiring and managing skills, and you'll take that with you for life. You will have a predictable, repeatable hiring process specific to your company. You will have defined boss best practices and a real process for confident team management. And you'll finally recognize your boss's possible, your boss, your business, your company's possibilities to scale successfully. Because now you'll get it. You'll see that you can get people and you will finally be able to start to realize how much bigger your vision can be. You'll leave excited to celebrate your dream team and the dramatic difference each new hire can bring. In fact, our last VIP boss days, which are, you can do the program um, with two, including two days in a workshop. Um, some, one of our people there was, li were literally jumping up and down and I just, you know, it's two days. So I thought she was stretching her legs and she goes, no, no, I'm literally that excited to go find this person that we just defined. So it's a very, it's a very empowering process that lets you feel finally in control of the people side. And even Zach, Zach, when he worked with me, he wanted to have a team that was trustworthy and effective without heartbreak. I'm not kidding. As soon as he signed up, our first call, the first question he asked me, he said, Talmar, just tell me, tell me, is this as good as it gets? Do I just have to lower my expectations? And I just about cried for him because that's not the case. You do not have to lower your expectations. And so after starting in the program, he was like, people ask if this program is worth it. And I tell them when I started, I thought it was an investment, but now I have a skill set. The training with what you are doing, the value is fantastic. You are buying a skill set instead of a headhunter. It's extremely valuable. And I will tell you that we've also started including a bonus we, because when the pandemic in 2020 started, we created a whole new process in there, a whole uh, program that is called Bossing Success for Remote Teams. In it, we talk about how to manage successfully for uh, teams in crisis because there was a lot of stress involved and unknowing, as well as how to set up remote team 
offices. That's a big part of that program where we have the Boston success. So that's a bonus that's been added into our program for anybody that joins. And here's what I want to know. If you are interested in it and you want in, if you type in the chat, I am the boss, we will set up a time to discuss if you're a fit for the program. You, my team will email you right away and we'll schedule a time that works on your calendar so I can answer any questions that you have. Because here's what I know. If you know that you're going to be hiring again in your future, if it, you need a specialist or a project manager, it would cost you $20,000 or more every time you need to hire if you worked with a recruiter. And even just hiring me one-on-one -on -one would cost you 15,000 or more. And that's more than I think you need to spend to learn this. If you wanna join us now, just drop in the chat and we will schedule this, I'm a boss. My team will email you directly. This call, the call that we'll have, it'll be with me. It'll be about 45 minutes and we'll talk about your business and what's going on. We'll talk about the bossification program and we can even discuss the VIP boss days if you know that you really prefer to learn in person. The best part about what's going on right now is that through the end of the year, anybody that joins into Bossification, either program, Bossification or VIP Boss Days, gets lifetime access to the resources, the tools, and the support. That is changing effective January 1, 2022. So please know if this is something you're interested in, now is the time to make sure that you get in so you can take advantage of the ongoing support without additional expense. Again, the program, all the tools, the weekly live Q&As, which has an extra eye, it's the live Q&As, uh, on-demand training, the templates, step-by-step -step process, there's community, all of that equals up to far over $20,000. And this is not the cost. Right now, it's, it is less than a quarter of that. Actually, I guess it's a quarter of that. If you want to get into the program or if you have uh, fast cash, uh, we do have uh, full pay options for you. But again, we'll talk about that when we decide if it's a good fit for you. So if you know that this is something that you want, know that you'll be surrounded by a community of other bosses and that you will really be uh, have access to how others are doing it, as well as our experts helping you understand how to develop a hiring process and a management process that lets you enjoy being the leader of your company. Beth had the same fear when she started that she wasn't going to be able to really figure it all out and that it was just going to be too much for her. And she said that Talmar makes hiring easy to understand and is playful throughout the process. I have been known to be a little bit uh, goofy. I don't know if you figured that out already. Um, if you want to be able to grow the people side of your business without the drama and the stress, if you tried hiring virtual assistants and friends or even the referrals, but it's not working, and you wish you could just know if a candidate would actually deliver results for your business, your clients, and yourself, now is the time to get in. Type, I'm the boss in the chat. My team will email you directly. We'll set up a time that's right for you. And in 45 minutes, we will know if we can get you in and get you set up for success. Because it's your time to build, lead, and celebrate. I want you enjoying that team. I want you high-fiving in crazy hipster clothes with the light shining on you or whatever your vision is of the real team. And there's a step-by-step -step process. It's super easy to figure out. It's what we walk you all the way through it. And if you join now, those resources are there for you as you continue to grow and scale your team. I want you to be able to rock your bossitude. Being a boss is the most fun, rewarding, best thing ever. And it doesn't have to be so hard. I would love the opportunity to help you.